two, one. Um, just got to make sure it connects to YouTube. All right, and we are live. So welcome to the Chameleon of Worlds, the Totem Pole. Final three, jury question and answer. Uh, we have our final three here with us, Anthony, Asia, and Jules. They have spent the last 38 days um, playing this game, making it here to the end, and now it is time for them to defend their games to the jury in hopes of becoming the winner. So um, up first we will have opening statements. We will have Pancake choose who goes first. Um, and yeah, so you'll have around seven minutes to make your opening statement. Each of you will have around seven minutes. Um, you can go under, but please try not to go over. And so yeah, so Pancake says that Jules will be going first. So Jules, when you are ready, you can unmute and start talking. Um, your time will start when you start talking. Um, hold up, hold up, I'm hearing from the jury that no one can hear you, so, so we are going to start over, that is not going to be counting against you at all, um, I'm so sorry, um, can someone speak, do we need to quit OBS? Yeah, I will be right back. That is so upsetting. That is so upsetting. Oh, I know why. It's because I'm literally stupid. Anyways, can someone can someone try again? Can someone speak? Hey. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right. I'm so sorry for that. Um, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> um, are you ready to go again, Jules? <laughs> are you ready to start <laughs> start that back? Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. When you are ready to go. Okay. I'll start with my disclaimer again, I guess. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm shaking so bad now. <laughs> Anyways, hi. <laughs> sorry. Anyways, um, I didn't prepare an actual like opening statement because when I read off of stuff, I start stuttering and I lose my train of thought. So I'm sorry. I didn't come professionally prepared. I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to handle it and I was going to get way in over my head and I'm suddenly going to forget any reading comprehension I I've ever had in my life. So that being said, I'm just going to get right into it. I believe every game <laughs> is divided into three parts, social, strategic, and physical. I'm going to get the easy one out of the way and say that my physical did not shine in this game. I have never been a comp beast and that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> repeating myself is just making me laugh so hard. <laughs> Poor Anthony and Asia. But um, yes, I'm not a comp beast. I did come close in some comp and I did. Oh Monty? 
Monty. Hello. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Any- <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I'm not a comp beast. That's okay. I did come through, like, I did, like, come close in some competitions, um, but I was never able to successfully win. <laughs> but I did put my heart in a lot of them, or I just didn't need to win them. Um, I'll mo- Anyways, I'll move on to social. Uh, I came into this game and I knew a lot of the people playing and I feel like a lot of other people, we've like, a lot of us have played together unless we were new, new. So it wasn't very hard for me to, I guess, place myself in this game because of my pre-made connections because we all knew each other. And for that reason one thing i did lack this game and i will admit it because i am um, this is one thing i've never really done in the game before i didn't really reach out in pms as much as i usually do in games but i was a very social presence in the house chat and i would like join the call sometimes to talk to people so i would make my connections through there and then i would be ended up in alliances <laughs> so i was like oh hey and i was more social like genuinely in the server than i was in pms and I apologize for that if I didn't take the time to like connect one on one. There was some stuff like going on through a lot of this game, so I was just like, Ugh, I don't have the time or energy to like d- d- form that. But if people did ask me to bond one on one, I did try. <laughs> so I'm so sorry. But that being said, I did get a lot of information through my connections and my alliances. Um, one person who fed me a lot of information was Dom. <laughs> Sorry, Dom. <laughs> and then I had an alliance with oh, Wyatt and Asia, and then one with Anthony and Dom. So those two sides going after each other was an interesting <laughs> concept. I was just kind of in the middle of it all. Like I felt like, I, like my parents were fighting, and I was just like, <laughs> um, okay. But um, yeah. So that happened and it was definitely interesting dynamic and that's when i had to choose basically who i wanted to go to the end with which is why i ended up voting dom even though i ended up being wishy-washy through the whole vote because i couldn't decide what was best for my game but neither wyatt or dom are here so that's (laughs) yeah well (laughs) um yeah (laughs) sorry i'm like (laughs) I hate this shit. Anyways, <laughs> I'm like really trying to think of everything. Um, I'll just, I'll just move on to strategic, I guess. Um, I tried really hard to be kind of a rat or snake. I don't think I'm any of those things usually or ever. Maybe I didn't do good, but usually when I was given information, I would, I would mostly tell it to Asia <laughs> or Jonah whenever Jonah was in the game. I tried to tell them everything, and, and unfortunately, Jonah was cut very early. Um, but because of my social standpoint, I was never really truly in danger at any point. And one game, like one <laughs> um, moment that stand out to me, stood out to me the most was when Dom confronted me when Adam was in the bottom, and I was able to well (laughs) a lot of people wanted william out that round but instead i voted adam out which led to him getting voted out and during that time i was convincing laney at the same time i was like look we're at the bottom we have to do this we have to vote together so i was able to switch that since she was being very um wishy-washy to begin with and she didn't want to vote adam because she was close to him and william and so did that guess (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, I'm trying really hard right now. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah. Um, obviously, I don't think <laughs> I'd played the most amazing game ever, but I sure did try. Even if it didn't come across that way, I was genuinely trying to see what all I could do. And even if it wasn't flashy or I didn't win comps or whatever, um, I guess I gave it my all. And that's all I can really say. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking now before I start crying. All right. Thank you, Jules. Um, As in the house chat, um, Anthony, you are up next. So you can unmute and start when you're ready. 
Okay, I'm gonna pass out too. Okay. Um all right, so coming into this game, um, especially looking at the rules of the totem pole, I think one of my biggest goals in this game was to minimize my target level. Um, was to find a way to be involved with the vote, be involved with the game, you know, um, stay in the loop, but not be the biggest threat in the room. Because especially as we got to the later game, you know, the Switch basically got to pick who they wanted to eliminate. And as long as I wasn't the biggest threat in the room, you know, I wouldn't be switching to the bottom. Um, and so obviously, you know, just like Jules, you know, my social connections were not amazing. Um, definitely university hit a lot harder than I thought. Um, but I made my interactions count. And I think that's what really what really matters in my head um, is that a lot of the connections that I made with people were ones that, you know, I was transparent and honest. And that's what I try to center my game around. Um, and I'll get to um, some stuff at the end. But uh, my strategy was to put a lot of my cards out on the table um, to show people kind of where I was voting and then because I was so transparent, people saw that as a way that one, they could get rid of me later on really easily because they know who I was with. Or two, they would be able to use me for votes and for ways to make big moves. And I think that's why I was on the correct side of the vote every single round in this game, except for Dom's elimination and Henry's. But I threw a vote because I couldn't vote Henry or Dom because I love them both. Um, but every single vote, I was on the right side. Um, and I knew that I was on the right side. Um, and although my social connections weren't great, I still formed bonds. You know, you can look at Timmy, who I've never met before in my entire life, um, who made me defender round two. Um, and then you can see how open I was with Wyatt and how me and Wyatt, how we kind of worked together uh, near the end of the game, sort of kind of protecting each other and trying our best to um, resolve, like, I guess, our relationship. And I think, you know, meeting Wyatt was also a really, really great um Thing throughout this game uh, my two greatest allies in this game were obviously lynn and dom um, and i think that was not a secret and i think it worked out great because lynn was a bigger threat than me or at least a bigger target than me and dom was a bigger target than me and so i had two people in this game who would most likely go out before me um, who i really felt like i could trust with my life um, and so doing everything i could to vote the right way um, and protect Dom and um, keeping Dom safe when I was top of the totem pole and sharing a lot of information with them um, definitely worked out in my favor. Sorry, I'm looking at the chart because I'm trying to remember everything. Um, another thing was during round three, during the re-rank, um, me, Dom, Kaylee, and Lynn were on the house call. I, I think Lynn was there. Um, and then for a while we were talking um, and eventually we started talking about advantages and um, that's when we found the advantage server. I had found it, and then I shared the information with them. Um, and that eventually led me to finding an exposed card. And I also found this power called the power grab that I never got to use because Wyatt picked the power that had nothing last week. So I was like, I can't use my power grab, which basically let me um, duplicate a defender's power. And on the wiki, the power that wasn't claimed was a vote, canceler, or stealer. Um, and if that one had gotten picked, you know, this final three may be very different. And I think the fact that I had that power and that 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 potential was there showed that I definitely put effort into this game um, and showed that the strategy was there for me to make moves. Um, and although I kind of hid behind bigger targets like Dom and Lynn and William, um, I definitely think that I had influence in this game and I had power. And I think the fact that people sort of saw me as a lesser threat than Dom and Lynn and William kind of worked right into the strategy that I wanted. Um, and the fact that I, you know, could win three comps at the end of the game um, straight in a row shows that, you know, people thought they could get me out later on and allowed me to slip by. And I think especially, as I said earlier in this game, like the totem pole, you kind of have to play to that kind of sense. Um, and I think the flexibility that I provided, I guess, with my transparency, you know, um, helped me form a bond to, through date night with uh, Megan, who told me how... You know, she wanted to try an alliance with me and Dom. And although, you know, Megan was someone who I considered a really big threat because of how well she had played the middle in a couple of votes, um, you know, that kept me safe literally the next week when Megan won top of the totem pole. Um, and I think that flexibility really allowed me how, I don't think throughout this entire game, I was a target one time. Um, I was in the bottom two twice, I'm bottom five twice, and I was a pawn in both of them. Um, 
And besides that, I, I don't think my name had become a target. I'm not sure if anyone even voted me during date night, but I the only time I really felt vulnerable was during date night. And as I said before, Dom and Lynn were my closest two allies. Everyone is voting William, but if people were to throw votes, you know, they could throw votes onto me. Um, and so throughout that, you know, I had heard Lainey was voting for me and I talked to Lainey and I made my moment count. As I said before, I don't, you know, I, I'm terrible with DMs, but voice calls is kind of where I kind of can show how I feel more. Um, And during my talk with Lainey, you know, I was like, I've got your back. And I do. And I did. Um, I definitely had Lainey's back. And more or less, Lainey didn't end up voting for me. Lainey ended up voting for Kaylee, which, you know, in hindsight, might have even saved my life in this game because I don't know how the rest of the votes lined up. Um, And throughout that, you know, I like low key was throwing Kaylee's name out as a possible if you're going to throw your vote, throw it on to Kaylee. because Lynn and Dom were my closest two allies. And I do think that hiding behind them would have been a lot better for me, especially as I saw Kaylee more connected to Jules and Asia and other people in this game, um, even though I was working with Kaylee. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. I won three totem pole comps at the end. I think that although um, my beginning and middle aim was definitely, beginning and middle game was very tame um, and very low key. And, you know, uh, I'm, I was on the right side of every vote, and I, but I may not have been spearheading it. Um, I think my end game really shows how dominant uh, it was. Um, being the top totem pole three times, basically deciding who went home every single week, um, definitely uh, worked in my favor. Um, I want to talk more about uh, my first totem pole win. Someone wants to ask me a question. I'm looking at my time. I have like 15 seconds left. Um, but overall, I really do think that throughout this game, um, my strategy of hiding behind bigger targets, um, as well as my open and honest transparency, helped me build the repertoire um, in order to keep myself safe, to uh, minimize my threat level, and show that um, I can win this game. Okay, I'm done. Bye. All right, and last but not least, Asia. Sorry if I sound like robot-y. I did write everything out because I'm very neurotic um, and had a lot of time in my hands. So just going to start off by saying I don't think any of us really thought we were going to have an easy road in this game, like from the new format to the cast size to the people on the cast. Like that was definitely the case for me. I do think that I had an easier road at the start than most people. And still, I hope you guys will give me a chance to explain why I believe I played the best game possible with the cards that I was dealt. So I came into this game with no concrete plans because not knowing how this format was going to work um, could have thwarted any strategy that I made very early on. Um, I was added to the anti-male agenda very early on in the game, and I knew that that would get me through like the first few rounds of the game uh, before the infighting started. And I also formed close bonds with Adam and Henry and Drew so that whenever that fell apart, I wouldn't be out in the cold. Um, in the second round, there was a pre-made rumor going around about myself, Lynn, Dom, Jonah, and Jules. Um, and as I stated on a call in front of half the house, that sort of rumor becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, there was no alliance, but I did vote to save Dom that round over Timmy because I knew that Dom would be a target ahead of me. Um, I didn't want to get picked off over a rumor. And also I know that Timmy leaving benefited my ride or die who was Drew. Um, Needless to say, the round that followed was really hard for me as I lost both Drew and Jonah and both were blind sides to me. Um, so after that, I worked to strengthen my other connections as best as I could, specifically with Cindy, Megan, and Adam. Um, I did what I could to let Kaylee know that she was safe with me if I ever did come into power. And keeping Dom, I knew that he began to include me in his long-term plans. Um, so that was obviously something that was massively beneficial to me in the end game. Um, at this point, my sights were kind of set on Lainey, William, and Anthony, who I had the weakest relationships with in this game. Um, as the votes in the middle period sort of never went my way, my game started to evolve, always in an effort to make sure that even though I wasn't voting with majority and people knew it, I was never at the top of anyone's hit list. 
I started to throw people under the bus, plant seeds of distrust, and make an attempt to break out of the pack so that I would have anything of value to say if I made it to this point. Um, my first aggressive move in this game was during the live night, um, where myself, Jules, and Wyatt, who were basically a final three at this point, decided that we needed to gun hard to get the votes for William to go home. I publicly stated that he was my target to every single person who asked me that night and was unflinching in my decision, even when I was having to tell William to his face why he shouldn't drag me out with him. Um, in my mind, it was a high risk, high reward move. If he had left at that point, it would have been massively beneficial to me because I really didn't have a game relationship with him, though we had a good personal relationship. And I hope that it would help strengthen the relationship that I had with both Dom and Kaylee. In the end, I lost two more allies that night with Kaylee and Cindy. And from there on, I knew the game would be incredibly difficult to me. My lowest point in the game was when Lynn got the switch the next round. I was more or less resigned to the bottom, I kind of thought that I was out of moves and there was nothing that I could have said to get Lynn to change her mind, especially with William leaking about um, Adam's power. So Adam using the power on me was basically the second win that I needed to get through the next half of the game because after that, I kind of really got into action, I think. It became very clear to me that round very early on that it was gonna be um, a vote between William and Adam. And even though me and the rest of my alliances wanted William gone, I knew that Adam would be leaving because Jules came to me and told me that it would be best for her game to get Adam out, though she didn't want to hurt me in the process. Um, I took this and I said to myself, this is something I can use. I said, Jules, do what's best for your game, because I knew that afterwards she would be backed into a corner and she would have to confess to Wyatt and to Megan, who would then be distrustful of her going forward. And that proved true and benefited me later on in the game, especially in the final five round, which I will talk about in a bit. Um, when the vote came down to Jules and Megan, I knew which way the votes were going. <laughs> Jules had Wyatt, Dom, and Anthony, and I knew there was no way that any of them were going to vote for Megan. So when Megan came to me asking for votes, I said, okay, yeah, I'll vote Jules out. And I did. I knew that Jules was staying, but um, at this point, the switch was super important. And I thought that if Megan did leave, maybe it would leave some goodwill. Um, just basically doing anything that I could to get ahead at this point. Um, so in the final five vote, things got incredibly frantic. My only goal for that round was to make sure that my final three of Jules, Wyatt, and myself made it through the night. And it sounds like a really easy three, a really easy thing to do, a three to two vote. No problem. Having a final three at that point should have been a breeze, but it wasn't. Um, things started to fall apart because firstly, for the first time, to my knowledge, I was someone's target. Anthony was very vocal about wanting me out that round. He did want to vote for me, and I knew it because I heard it from basically everyone in the house. Um, on the other side, the plan was always to vote for Dom because he was the only one outside of our alliance. However, Jules came to me and was worried about Wyatt potentially flipping because Wyatt had been throwing my name out as a decoy um, in the alliance that I knew that they had with Anthony and Dom. Um, meanwhile, Wyatt, worried that Jules would flip, as she has done before, came to me very concerned that Jules would flip again, um, and I had to reassure both of them. And while I didn't want to get Wyatt out just because Jules was feeling a little bit paranoid, I felt completely safe. I knew that Wyatt was never going to vote for me. We had too good of a relationship. There was no reason for them to backstab me at this point as I had proved my loyalty time and time again. However, I did not want Jules to go rogue on this vote. So I had to come up with a plan that would satisfy everyone. Uh, so we came up with a plan to split the vote and then we came up with another one and then another one. And as, <laughs> as votes changed and people changed sides, we had to evolve literally up until the moment that we were on call and the ceremony was happening. And finally, I made the final call, let Dom and Anthony vote for Wyatt, me and Wyatt vote for Dom, and Jules vote for me. If Wyatt flipped and voted for me, then the vote would have tied between myself and Wyatt. I knew at that point that Jules and Dom would vote out Wyatt, 
and Wyatt would go. But if Wyatt was telling the truth, the vote would tie between Wyatt and Dom, and me and Jules would save Wyatt. And that's exactly what happened. Um, at that point, even though Dom told me in PMs that I would lose to Wyatt, I felt that my loyalty to those two people had been concurrent throughout the entire game. No matter what I did, I never did anything that would put them directly in danger, and there was no reason for me to do so now when I knew that they were completely loyal to me. I know that my game is not very flashy. I didn't win a challenge. I didn't find an advantage. I only got the switch one time when I wasn't even in danger. But I think making it this far despite that is an accomplishment in of itself, and I am proud of the game that I played. Um, and I hope that if there's anything that y'all want to know or have clarified, I can clear it up. I'm sorry that I spoke really fast. I'm very nervous. I'm shaking. Um, but yeah, that's all I got to say. I'm done now. <laughs> the way I didn't unmute myself on the stream. Hate having to mute myself two places and unmute two places. All right, so first of all, for the viewers, we are going to be having um, the jurors come on one by one. We're gonna be starting with Lainey. Um, she will have 10 minutes to say what she wants, ask any questions she wants. Yes. Just waiting for her to connect on into the jury. And then I'll drag her up here and then her 10 minutes will begin. Here we go. All right, hello, Lainey. All right, so you have 10 minutes um, to say anything you want, ask any questions you want. Um, you don't have to use all 10 minutes. If you're satisfied before the 10 minutes are over, you can just let me know. Um, but I will be cutting you off at 10 minutes. So when you're ready, you can start asking your questions. Hello, can y'all hear me? Yes, okay, there we go. Okay, can you see me? I can't, I can't, you can't see me. Okay, that's fine. Um, am I being let in? Okay, never mind. Okay, so my one question for um, y'all is what makes you deserve it over the others? Like, what, why do you deserve to win? I will go first, I guess. Um, okay, I'm going to say I deserve it because I feel as if... I feel, based on the knowledge that I have of what happened in this game, as well as um, the things that I've heard in the opening statements, um, some of which was new information to me, some of which I knew, um, that I played, if I didn't best in any other area, I think I played a better social game and maybe an up there strategic game. I know that I wasn't going to be a comp beast, but like I did what I had to do with um, the things that I am gifted in, which I think I'm good at getting people to like me and getting people to trust me. Um, 
and making smart moves, if not flashy ones. So I don't really know if I'm answering the question. I think I deserve to win because I feel as if I played in all areas to the absolute best of my ability. Okay. Yep. I can go next. Um, so I think I deserve to win over my um, amazing other finalists um, because of Oh my god, yay, yay. Okay. Uh, because of my one competition ability, as well as using those wins to, I guess, influence the game, um, overcoming a final three deal at the final four, um, as well as um, keeping my allies uh, who, you know, were pretty much on the bottom and, you know, using them as shields and getting them as far as I could. Um, as well as, you know, although my social game wasn't the strongest, um, I made my social interactions count. Um, they were very far and in, in between, but I think when I did, was able to reach out and be on voice calls and talk with people, um, that those interactions count. You know, as I said before, um, that night when, you know, I discovered the Advantage server with, you know, Lynn, Kaylee, and Dom on the house call, I also helped formulate the plan to blindside Drew. Um, that Wyatt was someone who I could potentially work with in the future and instead of targeting Wyatt who you know everyone probably expected us to um Drew was another option that I think people would be more on board to get out and you know formulating that um with that limited interaction um definitely worked in my favor as I know Drew was someone who did not want me in the game um okay so I would say <laughs> sorry I had it in my head and then I lost it once I started talking Hello. <laughs> um, I'd say that I deserve to win because I was given a lot of information in this game. It's debatable whether what I chose to do with that information was good or not, but I did use it in a way that I tried to benefit my allies, and I used the interactions I did had to the best of my abilities because I did have people telling me, like, especially on date night, like that they wanted to work with me just because, like, they. I don't know, like they hear nice things about me or just because of like my presence in the house chat and stuff like that. So I feel like I really did work with what I was given and um, it benefited me. And I feel like um, that's all you sometimes that's all you can really do in a game. And yeah. <laughs> How much time do I have left, Monty? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna continue until he puts me on. Like five minutes. Um, okay. uh, oh, perfect! I love it. I love it. So, um, I was someone who voted with y'all most of the time. I would say, um, I I find I flipped votes. I did, and I mean I feel bad about doing it in hindsight, but at the same time, it's like it was what was best for my game personally. In most of the cases, um. Like with the Drew thing, which I love Drew, and I'm very sad to have, like, lost him, but I did vote him out, so, you know, whatever. But it, like, looking at him, he was already a comp beast after the first, like, round or two, you know? Like, I I knew that I am not a comp beast, so I need, you know, people who, I guess, are equally not as comp beasty to be in the game. That's why, like, I targeted Andrew, uh, Andrew, Anthony at the beginning. I always call you Andrew. I'm so sorry. I, I targeted Anthony at the beginning of the game. Definitely. And I was vocal about it to some people um, up until the date night thing. And it's we talked a little bit and I mean, whatever. I ended up flipping. I mean, uh, throwing a vote on Kaylee instead of vote, voting you, which I was going to do. Um, but yeah, I'm just like trying to like. I don't know. I, I want to know, like, what makes you. S <sighs> Lord, I don't know. I think I'm good. I think I think I know who I want to vote. I think I do. Um, I'm going to listen to all the other jurors' questions and whatnot and make my decision. So congratulations to whichever one of you wins. Y'all are all great players. Peace out, Girl Scout. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Next up, we do we have? Next up, we have Cindy. So I will give the stream like 10 seconds to catch up. All right. Hello, Cindy. 
Well, hi. Um, let me mute the YouTube real quick. So no that problem. I don't get an echo. <laughs> no problem. Um, while you're doing that, I can explain. So, ten minutes. You can say, ask, or ask anything you want during those ten minutes. Once you start your little jury bit, then the time will start. Uh, so I have been told that I have a reputation as a very mean juror. So going with that, everyone compliment me. I want everyone to go around and give me a compliment. Um, uh, Anthony, you can start. Yeah, um, I think that's easy for me. I think you are one of the funniest people and like most, I guess your energy, I think is like infectious on the voice calls. I just... All I, can, all I remember is, like, being on voice call and you just, like, vibing out and, like, you know, like, I just, like, I was high as fuck one night and I think I hopped on the call and you were also high as fuck on the call and I just, I think that was one of my favorite um, non-strategic, non-game moments just in the game. Um, and I think for me, just the way you are so go with the flow and so, I think, I don't know, you're just, you're just energy is infectious to me and I just love that. So, that's mine. I'll go next. Um, <laughs> I'm really happy that we got to play this together, especially after the disaster that was Lover. But um, you are generally one of the nicest people I've met and also just very easy to talk to, especially after we made the, the musical hoax alliance. <laughs> I was just where I could have fun to talk with you. And it didn't happen in server, but like, um whenever we got when i was playing sequester like got ready did your makeup with me just for fun it's just like little moves like that but like i i really whenever i interact with you because i think i don't know you're just a, you're you have a very warm personality and i think it's just like it's just really like comforting to be around you and have like those moments with you so i really appreciated that <laughs> Hey, um, so this is easy for me. You are definitely one of the like, and this is a compliment. You are one of the scariest players out there. When I saw you were on this cast, I was like, oh no. <laughs> I said, oh no, I hosted her. I know what she's about. This is scary. You, like everyone knew you were a beast in this game. By the time we got to the midway point, we were saying, okay, somebody's got to do something about Cindy. She's going to take this whole game away with her. Like, you're just good. You are socially very good. You are strategically very good. You can win comps when you want to. You are just all around a very, very good player. And if you got farther, I do think you would have swept us all in your dust. So. I did have plans to sweep most of you in, our do in my dust. But Asia, I was not sweeping you in, in my dust. Um, <laughs> no, um, okay, and then, um, yeah, I had other questions. Oh, I wanted, um, oh god, this is counting towards my time. I literally put it in the chat. Where did I say what I was gonna ask? This is so well planned. Okay, yeah, and then, um, I wanted a question sort of outline like the difference between between what you know now and what you know then with regards to who you would ally yourself with because i think in the beginning of the game alliances weren't necessarily what they would be working at the end of the game and explain sort of why you would switch them or if you were like no nah, i'm good am i go first i'm so i'm assuming like what i would do differently in the beginning and like who i would align with more or less yeah just like the alliances you made in the beginning versus what knowing what you know now you would have done okay i think i definitely um would have aligned with wyatt a lot earlier i think although i think Wyatt had their hands in a lot of different uh buckets i think you know as the game progressed you know i i genuinely appreciated how honest we were with each other and that's kind of um what i wanted to center my game around you know people knowing where i was standing you know who i was with um and i think working with Wyatt would have been a great addition to that. Um, I also wish I integrated Henry more with Dom and Lynn because um, I love Henry and Henry was also someone I was working really, really well with. Um, and then also I think Adam, uh, as soon as I joined the Advantage server, Adam and William were already in it. 
Um, and so I think reaching out to Adam more, I think could have helped prevent, you know, the whole Adam using his advantage against Lynn um, and maybe trying to like work something that way. And I think in hindsight, like that might've been beneficial, but sitting here at the end anyways, I can't be super uh, mad about how it turned out, but if I could do it differently, those three would be the three I would work on. Okay. Um, <laughs> first off, literally the first thing that comes to mind, I regret this so much. Drew leaving was so sad on my heart, and you know this. If I could have made Asia's Michigan bitches happen so much sooner, or if I had, like, just pushed for Drew to be in alliances, because Drew, like, I fully said, Drew, you are my ride or die, you are my everything in this game, and yet we had no alliances together other than Asia's Michigan bitches. So, like, if I could have integrated drew better then i think it would have been better for my game because he's better at comps than me which is why i wanted to stick to him like glue i think i would have had an easier road in the end if he was here um other than that i think it would have been nice if i got to work with laney because when laney and i um talked on literally her last day in the house we were like wow we really voted together for most of the game we really kind of were on the same side without being on the same side if she and i were working together the whole like all of the times where i was having like the most trouble in this game i think would have gone so much smoother if i was closer with laney so that's definitely mine um of uh, Adam and Lainey, even though the two people are basically screwed over in this game, uh, it did like, make me sad to do so, but it was just because I didn't have a connection with a good one to begin with. Like, even if we were fine on a panel, I didn't know game wise. So I feel like if we had genuinely taken the time to um, form something, um, it would have gotten a lot like easier and I wouldn't have done the things I did. Um, but um, yeah, <laughs> I would say Adam and Lady. I did not prepare to still have time after these two questions. Um, I am going to scroll back up. There was a question a juror had that I want to give Asia a chance to address. Okay, from an anonymous juror, it seems like up until the final five round, many of Asia's moves were unsuccessful and failed some of the times. Is this wrong to assume? Asia, please respond. I don't think that's wrong to assume, but the the thing is, I didn't actually have, like, a lot of moves that I was pushing for myself. When I say, like, the things that I highlight in my opening statement live night and final five i think those are the times where i was most aggressive final five worked flawless fine whatever live night it didn't work because william had an advantage the rest of the time i was kind of just chilling like i never said oh i want this person out because they're terrible for my game whatever whatever it was more like i have an ally who's like i don't want to leave and it sucks to lose them but i also knew that if they left, I would have this person, this person, this person still left. So it is correct. I did, like, me voting in the minority, it's very clear that a lot of my moves or moves did fail, but I don't think that that was necessarily something that was a deal breaker for my game because a lot of the votes, even if they didn't go my way, I knew that I could easily regroup from it, um, especially considering, like, the people that I did lose, like Jonah, Drew, Henry. Um, like, other than Drew, I don't think that they would have necessarily largely contributed to my game in the long run. And Adam, as much as I hate to say it, Adam had already done the best thing that he could have possibly done for me in saving me that round. So him going, it was like, well, thanks. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, I don't think it's unfair to say I didn't have a lot of big moves and the things that I did try to do didn't always work out. That's fair to assume, yes. I'm going to say my opinion here, which is that voting in the minority can also be a move to gain trust with a minority. Um, 
So voting in the minority is not necessarily a move that I would discredit someone for. Um, Anthony, we started the game having DMs, and then by the time I left the game, we had no DM. What happened? I... I have to say I got really, really busy um, in that, you know, I, I was not really DMing anyone um, because of like school just hit really, really hard. But I tried to get on voice calls when I could um, and talk with alliances um, as much as I could. Um, but yeah, no, definitely um, it became hard to reach out um, to people uh, during especially the middle of the game. Yeah. Uh, but it was not not that I didn't want to work with you, but I think also once I was put in the fi bottom five, I think, um, by you as a pawn, I think for me it felt like I was expendable as an ally. And I think that's why I also had stopped reaching out as much. Um, but And then sort of drifted to more towards, you know, William and, you know, Dom and Lynn and Kaylee um, and Wyatt. Do I still have time somehow, Monty? Um, no, you are out of time. If you want, if you have a quick question, because I know you've asked uh, two, like, extra questions. If you have a quick one for Jules, you can ask, but if not, just because the next juror is not here, so you can cut into their time a little bit. Uh, screw you, next juror. Jules. <laughs> Jules, I think um, something that you did an amazing job of was getting people on both sides to trust you, regardless of if you were voting with them. Um, can you sort of explain to me how you managed to do that so that I can do that in the future? <laughs> I'm going to be really honest. <laughs> I just, I, I get told a lot whenever I play. I, I feel like it's a problem I have. I don't see what I do good games ever. So that's why I like I have time hyping myself up. But people are like, it's just like easy to talk to everyone wants to work with you because you're nice. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but I just think that um, <clears throat> how I got information, especially from both sides, was just because like, Everyone was targeting each other, and because of that, I didn't really have a problem. So even if my vote was important, and if people did lose trust, me, it was damage enough. I was in danger. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> I guess it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just so charismatic. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I'm muting myself. <laughs> that was lovely. Um, good luck, everyone. Congrats on final three and take a deep breath. It's over soon. All right. So I will be. <laughs> so Kaylee is not able to make it today. So I will be Kaylee today. Hello, everyone. My name is Kaylee. Um, she has left a statement. Um, I hate all three of you and none of you have any redeeming qualities, so picking a winner is difficult. I still don't understand this game, so my question is to all three of you. Please explain this game to me, and also explain how you played this game the best. Also tell me I'm pretty. Thank you. Love you all. Good luck. Bye-bye. Wait, what was this? It was... What did we do again? I'm sorry. Explain I'm still kind the game. Of... Explain the game, explain why you played it the best, and tell her she's pretty. The third one's going to be kind of hard. Um, okay. Um, okay, so the totem pole, basically, just a clusterfuck. Um, I'm just going to say that. That's how you, how you explain it. Um, I think I played the best because, although my social interactions definitely lacking, um, I think... A lot of people knew, I guess, who I was with and where I stood, and yet still didn't deem me as a target. I um, was able to minimize my threat level, especially during the middle to end game when switches became, you know, the do or die on the totem pole. Um, as well as, you know, continue to, you know, be on the right side of the vote and, you know, form connections even with people who I wasn't voting with. Um, and I think, you know, building connection, um, 
with people from the other side, I think was really, really integral to my game. You know, um, early on when William switched me, um, especially during, you know, all the stuff that was happening, I think showed that um, I could make those connections with people. Um, and I think with that, as well as, you know, I think my dominant end game, um, I think shows that I hope I deserve um, your vote. And uh, Kaylee, you're so, so pretty. I just get butterflies every time I see you. I guess I got, um, the totem pole is um, something. <laughs> I I still don't understand it. I was ready to piggyback on Jonah's um, back um, because they played, they won Monty's mini. So I was like, okay, cool. You know what you're doing. They didn't, but it's okay. <laughs> Basically, it's a, it's a challenge, a, a placement, switch, a defender, and then you vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit like that. It's all I got from this game, as well as safety, and, like the, you can save someone and then powers. That's all I know. Um, I should have just called it a buck, too. Why is in the best? Um, I, I, I played it pretty differently than I do because, not really. I guess because I just had to make myself like a social presence without actually forming those one-on-ones because just stuff going on and I didn't have time to do it. Um, even if, um, I don't know, my mind's going all over the place. <laughs> um, basically, I think I was able to adjust whatever was going on. I was early in any danger at all. So I was a defender. I was, I was switched at one point. So I got to do stuff like that and decisions even if i had to burn some relationships once again it never affected me horribly because i'm here and i was never truly in any you know if people saw me it was okay because yeah <laughs> i don't know what that means and kaylee you're beautiful all the time Hold on. one minute <laughs> where is it where is it where is it I made you this, so I hope this is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the totem pole. Um, basically, you win comps, or you find advantages, or you die trying. Um, or maybe you don't die because you're just really sneaky um, and very good at making people feel sorry for you, I guess. Um, why did that the best? Wow. Um, okay, so I first part failed, second part failed. Um, but I am very good at the lying part um, and making people feel sorry for me and also just like trust me and feel good about me as a person. Um, I do think that the way I presented myself in this game, because I can't really win comps and because like I was voting in the minority, people kind of looked at me as someone who was not very threatening. Um, and so they weren't really worried about taking me out. They thought, oh, Asia's with me. Asia will vote with me. Um, if Asia does win something, I'm good with her because she's never had any power to prove otherwise. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like I played pretty well. Uh, Kaylee. You find as hell. I want you so bad. You already know it. Period. All right. So thank you, Kaylee, for leaving that statement. Um, Monty, you're muted still. All right. Thank you, Kaylee, for that statement. Um, now I'm going to go off camera. Bye, everyone. Um, and we are going to be bringing in the next year, we're going to be bringing in Adam. So I'm going to, he's ready. So here he is. All right, Adam, welcome. As you hopefully know by now, you have 10 minutes. Um, once you start doing your jury things, your 10 minutes will start. Um, yeah, go for it when you're ready.
I cannot hear you. You cannot. No. Also, can I hear him? There's nothing. Is the mic on your headset like muted? Oh, I have no idea. There we go. Okay. There we go. Was it a Monty issue? No. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess it's just me. Um, hi. So I want to preface this with saying that I usually vote for whoever says my name the most during their final tribal like performance. So Anthony, you're sorely lacking. Um, but I want to first do like a little silly question and then we'll get into serious stuff. So I'm going to say a sentence and I want you to finish it off with like four to five words that describe your game overall. Okay, you ready? And this is kind of like inspired by Lynn. So Anthony, you'll love this. The sentence is pussy talented it blank. Anthony, you can start. So am I finishing? Sorry, I kind of blanked Finish out. The because sentence. I thought, oh, it do cartwheels. Oh, That's are your, we no, right, like, are making it up? It, it, yeah, finish oh, the pussy sentence. Ta with, pussy talented. With your game. It found an advantage. Asia. Um, pussy talented. It tried really hard, really, really hard. Uh, pussy talented. She did the damn thing. <laughs> All right, I love it. So I'm at a dilemma because right now it's pretty lively in the jury chat at least how i experience it um so i came into jury not wanting to vote anthony at all and i will tell you why anthony i feel like even though we never talked there was still a lot of animosity between us for like no reason um and even leaving it just i don't think you and i had one positive interaction Whereas Jules is also someone who I'd never talked to, and yet Jules would literally step on my throat, and I would thank her. Um, so I'm just like, I'm at a crossroads with you, and I just want you to keep that in mind. I don't have a question for you, because I honestly, like, my question was about your social game, and you actually did a really good job explaining that. Um, so you kind of crossed that off the list. So this is just me talking at you. Um, next. Jules in Asia. I feel like you guys are kind of like two sides of the same coin where Jules got the side that wasn't really as well positioned as Asia in terms of like totem pole, like weekly, but also she had the side that was constantly making moves. Um, so I'm trying to see like when I flip that coin, which side am I happier it lands on? And I kind of want you to just to battle it out and tell me why you're better than the other one. Um, and then maybe afterwards, I'll have a question for Anthony. So Asia, you can start. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm locked in. I know. I saw you go deaf. Okay. Um, I'll go. I... Ugh. Oh. The way I literally called Jules for this and said, I don't want to trash talk you. Okay. Uh, I feel like <laughs> my side is better because me being positioned where I was week by week in the totem pole, that's not a place where it requires you to make moves. Because if I'm sitting pretty up here and I start pushing things and making stuff happen, that position can lower. By the time that I was in the bottom, we were all the way near like the end game where anyone can be in the bottom at any time because basically the only thing that matters is the switch. So like if I was pushing things and being crazy all in the pre-jury phase, then my standing might not have been as good. And I might have had a really impressive resume of big moves and gotten like fourth because like why it was the big threat because why it was sort of making things happen behind the scenes and I had hit uh, had their hands in like all these pots and things. If I was doing that, then I might have been the one who got fourth. So I think that I did what I did to maintain my social position while also not risking my threat level going up too high. And I think that if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't be here right now. 
Um, I feel like mine is better just because I feel like in a way I'm um, because of like me never like being targeted or whatnot. I was never <clears throat> like the target, I guess. <laughs> um, I feel like because of that, um, people told me a lot of information and because of my comp resume, I don't think people were going to expect me to win anything. <laughs> so they didn't have to stress whether or not I was going to be leading to their demise or whatnot. But I feel like that's where I could be underestimated away because I was told so much information. I was able to spread what I'm around, mostly to Asia. <laughs> I just love that. I can't say anything bad about that woman. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. So I just feel like in a way I was able to do that. I don't know if I worded that the correct way necessarily, but I just think um, because I was able to lay low I don't I'm like scratching my head trying to think of the right word for this I'm so sorry I don't do well on the spot um it was all just about positioning myself in a good way with everyone targeting each other and everyone telling me what they wanted me to hear I was able to make my moves in the process and successfully get to the end I hope that made sense <laughs> it did Monty how much time do I have Monty? Four minutes? Okay. Um, Anthony, I do have a question for you. So why should I vote for you specifically? Not like a general statement for why you think you should get votes in general. Why specifically with the limited amount of interactions that, I, that we had, the kind of, I'll be honest, slimy and shitty way you left me like after you voted me out and then, you know, just now. Yeah, well, I, I first want to say like I... You know, I never had any animosity towards you. I, I feel terrible that um, it came off that way. And I and imp intent does not equal impact. So I really apologize um, for making you feel like that or think like I had any like sort of hate towards you. Um, I, I tried to make every interaction I had with people as honest as I could. Um, and when I said like, if you ended up staying that week, because I, I told you, you know, before you left that I was probably voting for you. Um, that if you did end up saying like I would be open to working with you um and and like that was completely genuine and on date night like you know what when I said um what I said to you that like we should talk more afterwards even though I'm terrible with dms um and I like it's my fault for not reaching out um but that was also genuine it was also genuine that I would have dragged you um uh, if I got voted out because I was scared of getting votes thrown on me um but um you know I I don't know how you as juror want to vote, um, but if you as juror value, um, I guess, uh, I guess the challenge wins as well as being someone who wasn't afraid to sort of, you know, make my allegiance known, show my transparency. And, you know, as someone who is a competition threat and knows that the threatening people get out, you know, early jury, mid jury, late jury, like they don't get to the end. And mit find a way to minimize that target somehow, even with this, like all the stuff that happened, like week two and three. Um, if you do find that um, important and valuable, um, then I would hope to get your jury vote in that sense. That's a good answer. All right, um, that's my questions. Um, yeah, no, I don't have anything more. Just remember, uh, say my name more often. Gas me up, even in other people's answers. Tell me why I should have won the game. Um, and that's how you get my vote. Uh, you guys are just great and I love you all and it was really fun to play for you. I don't think you hate me, Anthony. We just like didn't work. You're also like extremely attractive, which I love. Um, so yeah, Monty, take me out of here. I'm sick of it. You can just go. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> all right. So next up we are going to have Megan. Um, she is here, so did that drag her in? Hello, Megan. Um, so just like all the other jurors, you will have 10 minutes. Um, you can give any statements, say anything, ask any questions you want during those 10 minutes. Um, once you unmute and start asking questions or saying your jury statement, then your time will start for those 10 minutes. OK, 
can y'all hear me? Yes. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. Um, I was not prepared for this because I thought William was after Adam because I thought we were going in order. So I was trying to put on makeup to look cute for this. Um, I'm in the middle of it. So you guys get half cute Megan. Uh, okay. Why didn't William go before me? Um, he asked to be last because he was, he's TAing for a lab and he wasn't sure if he was going to be home. The way I don't pay attention. Okay, anyway, hi guys. Congrats to making the finale. You're in a spot that uh, I wanted to be in and every other jury member wanted to be in. So um, props to you. Uh, I, I'm going to be quite honest. Uh, production told us to come up with questions <laughs> beforehand. So we didn't all have the same questions. And uh, I did not because I'm lazy. Um, so everything tonight is going to be off the top of my head and based on like what other people said. So I'm going to not repeat questions and things from other people. Um, so you're welcome for that. First, I just kind of want to like, I guess, talk briefly about how I view your guys' games. Um, Jules, I view your game as like a snaky rat troll, two-faced motherfucker, um, literally in the nicest human body I could ever imagine. Um, if I tried to do any of the things that you did in this game, hi, my cat wants to say hi. If I tried to do any of the things that you did in this game, I would have been promptly destroyed, um, cut apart, eaten up, chewed, and spit the fuck back out. Um, so I want to say really good props to you. I don't know how you literally were probably the snakiest flip-flopper ever in a game and still just make everyone love you. I don't know how the fuck you do that. Teach me your ways. Um, <laughs> Anthony... Fuck you. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I, I say fuck you because uh, it was me and Cindy tied for the most comp wins until you had to fucking come and pull your fucking head out of your ass at the last second. So uh, thanks for that, you jerk. Um, you are a comp beast and nobody ever knew it until uh, we needed to, which I feel like you uh, played that really well waiting to show how strong you were and, and doing that. Um, you found yourself a really good meat shield. Uh, you literally hid behind him. And I'm not saying that as an insult because I personally appreciate a good meat shield strategy, especially when um, you are willing and able to cut the meat shield at the particular time. Um, not entirely sure if you did that 100%, but Dom's not here. So, you know, you kind of did cut the meat shield. Um, and you're really nice and funny. Um, you did kind of go AWOL for a bit, but you played a strong ass game from someone who was like associated with number one target the entire time. Um, so that was awesome. Asia, I don't know how the fuck you do it either. Like you and Jules are kind of like the same, but not because like Jules was so fucking quiet about her fucking shadiness, but you were just like out in the open, like I told the jury the night that like my eyes opened and I realized how fucking amazing and strong you are was date night. Cause I talked to you last, I think. And I, and I was like, well, what are you going to do then? Are you afraid of getting dragged? And you're like, nope, fuck it. I told William I'm voting for you. If you drag me, you fucking drag me balls to the wall, bitch. And I was like, Oh, okay. So we got a fucking player on our hands. Um, so that like really just like raised my respect for you through the roof. And guess what? Like you didn't fucking get dragged because William didn't fucking go home. So like I should have listened to you and done that instead of vote for Kaylee. Um, because I was a pussy ass bitch. So uh, I just wish I had the balls that you have uh to do things like that and be so upfront about things that you're doing. Um, and then also Asia, another good thing about your game was that you were like honestly fairly trustworthy for the most part. Um, I'd say out of the three here, you probably did tell the truth more than the other two um and uh listening to you earlier say that you did actually vote to keep me kind of like made me want to die because i thought it was me and wyatt um and that was it turns out it was not fuck you Wyatt, you motherfucker um I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that was really nice um I don't really have any questions for gameplay because I feel like a lot of people have asked like the big overarching questions and we've heard a lot about your specific moves, your overall strategy and your relationships. Um, so since I don't really have any more questions um, specific to gameplay, um, I have some funny irrelevant questions for you guys to um, mirror the fact that I was incredibly irrelevant throughout this game. So here we go. I'm going to start with Asia. 
can you tell me, hey, um, I want you to tell me what you think the most overrated song in Grease 2 is and what the most underrated song in Grease 2 is. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh. Megan. You can look at the song list if you yeah. want. I know we talked yeah. about it. I know we talked about it. It's one of my favorite yeah. movies and nobody ever likes it. So you can look up the song list. I have time, right, Monty? I. Oh, I'm stupid. Five minutes left? That's not time. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Hmm. That's hard because, like, overrated is hard to say in context of, like, Grease 2 because, like, nobody fucking likes it. So it's hard to say overrated. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say. Okay. I'm gonna say reproduction only because people like like it as a meme. So like people like like that's the song that they remember. They're like, oh, Grease Two of the sex song, like one of the sex songs, one of the sex songs. Um, yeah. So that so that one. Um, what do I? I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is a popular opinion, but I just think that score tonight. I, I fucking love that song. And like people like it, but because it's Grease 2, they don't fucking like it enough. That is a good ass song. And the scene is just fun. I love the scene. So that makes the song heightened for me, I think. But yeah, I'm not going to fucking ramble about Grease 2. <laughs> we can ramble about Grease 2 for the rest of the finale. <laughs> I am a fan. Um, fuck it. Let's just turn it on. Let's stream it. Fuck the votes. Um, but yes, I agree. Score Tonight is an amazing song. The choreography is stellar. Um, Thank you for that. Uh, next I have is Jules. Hi, Jules. Um, I want you to tell me um, if you were a candle, what scent would you be and why? Ooh, um, fuck. There's this one I got and I just like, I just really liked it. I felt, I don't know. I just felt like at peace with it. So I'm gonna say watermelon lemonade. <laughs> Uh, and a candle. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's, it's, I feel like that is fairly accurate to your personality. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then finally, I have an irrelevant question for Anthony as well. <coughs> Anthony, how are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. I'm excited. Awesome. You look hot as usual. Um, can you tell me, Anthony? <laughs> can you tell me? Would you rather have finger-sized nipples? Or nipple-sized fingers. Um, I would have to say finger-sized nipples, um, because I could like bend the finger down, and they wouldn't really show in the shirt unless I really wanted people to know. And if they're like finger-sized, I feel like I could grab things with them, like you know, like yeah. that could be the possibility. Or like you could like hold it like a little shelf. So if I'm like tired, I can just put like something on it. Um, so definitely finger-sized nipples. Absolutely easy answer. Awesome. That good. That's the right answer because anyone who says nipple sized fingers is stupid. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I have. Um, you guys all had really, really strong points to your games uh, and very, very few flaws. And if you did have flaws in your games, they were very minimal. So I do think that we have a very strong final three here tonight. We may not have the most crazy, wild, outspoken, loud people here tonight. Uh, that's you, William. I'm talking about you. Um, but I do think we have probably the three best overall players um, because you guys did the thing and you guys didn't get voted out or dragged and you're here tonight. So congrats to whoever wins. I hope to talk to you all on the other side and peace. All right. So next up we have Dom. So I will be dragging him in in just a moment. Love the new profile picture, Jacob. Just changed. All right, hello, Dom. So just like all the other jurors, you have 10 minutes to say or ask any questions or statements you want. Um, once you start, your time will start. Okay, can I start? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, I just wanna start off by saying that I really dislike all three of you. Um, I think you guys are so rude, um, but for real, if it couldn't have been me in the finals, um, you three were the three that I was hoping that I could at least vote for any of you and be content with 
the winner. So with that being said, um, I guess I should get into my jury questions. Um, I'm going to start with Jules just because let's just like change it up, you know? Um, so actually, no, no, no. I have a fun question first for everybody. So if like, this is for all of you, if you guys had to remove one jury member from this jury, who would it be? And you guys can go in whichever order you'd like. Okay. Um, so I'm only going to say this because I want to say his name like 12 times. Uh, so that he'll vote for me. So Adam, 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 Adam. Um, but also I love Adam, but Adam, Adam. Whoever else wants to go. <laughs> Not as... <laughs> um, oh God, this is kind of me. What if I said you? How would you feel? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Switch it up on you so I have to suck up. Anyways, mm. I'm gonna say based on how much we talked, I'm gonna say Lynn, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's just because I would want Henry and Jury so bad. <laughs> He's so crazy. Or Jonah. They were wrong. I'm looking, and it's really hard to say, honestly, because I don't know who's my friend here. Um, but I think just based on the way that they left, I also have to say Lynn, because, like, I was partly responsible for, like, her leaving. I can't, like, I she wasn't happy. She didn't deserve to go out like that. So, like, Lynn, obviously, I guess. Okay, okay, that was just for fun. Okay, now, thank you for at least answering. Jules, I am going to start with you. Um, obviously, like, I adore you. Um, I am happy that we got to play a game together. Um, it's been fun to just chat and have, like, fun just messing around, I guess. Um, I think you played, actually, a phenomenal game, if I can say that. I don't even know how Totem Pole really works. So, if, like, I'm just going to say that. Um, I think... You deserve a lot of credit for managing your connections in this game. And I think what I need from you is to tell me, like, what move did you make that was on your own rather than just, like, taking part in something? And I'm sorry if that's been asked. I don't know if it has been. Can I think about that? <laughs> oh, my God. If you need to. Actually, I, I, do, I think I do have an answer. Um. <clears throat> when Henry men made me the defender and I saved him because a lot of people easily were like you should just cut him off everybody wants Henry gone he's too crazy and I know he is which is why I wanted him in <laughs> I most of this like I like Anthony I kind of hid behind bigger targets while I was aligned with them at the same time and it benefited the hell out of me and even I thought once I saved Henry I was like this is going to put me in a really weird place because even Sam was like messaging me like, you really could have just let him go. And I was like, yeah, I could have, but I didn't. <laughs> and even if it ended up leading to him getting voted out anyways, it still kept me safe for another round. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll go to Asia next. Cause why not? Um, hi Asia. Um, I hi. do. I owe you a lot of respect in this game. Not that I don't respect you, oh my God. I just, but anyways, you know what I mean. Um, I feel like I was constantly giving you like the benefit of the doubt, even though I was, I know I was like never in your top priority. Like I just, that's just who you are. And I think that you capitalized on that very well this game. Um, so I do have to applaud you for that. Um, it, and I guess the thing that I want to know from you is I, you probably remember this, but I did come to you a few rounds ago and I was saying, if I'm going to be in the finals and lose to somebody, I want to be losing to the best. And I named you, Jules, and Anthony. I think you guys were the three that I was very content with losing to. And I'm happy that this is where we are at, as I said before. And you, I just like keep it short. You agreed, like, or you said that you agreed. And I just kind of want to know if what you said was true, because what I said was true, um, or were you just saying that just to save yourself later on in the game? Okay. So in terms of 
I want to be in the end with, you know, people I can be happy to lose to 100%. And like, I meant that with my whole heart, whether that was you, not necessarily. Like I, like, it's been very transparent at this point that I did want to be in the end with Wyatt and Jules, but that's just because I've been with them since the very start. And like, I had a conversation with Wyatt where like, after you were like, oh, you're not saying you're going to regret this, but you're going to regret this because why it would sweep you and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I don't care because I feel like I played a good-ass game and I feel like you played a good-ass game. And that's what I want to compete against in the end. So I wanted to be in the end with my loyalties because they were my loyalties, but everyone in the top five, I would have been fine losing to because I do think that you've all played very great games. Dom, you played one of the best games. You know you were the cockroach of this season. Like, I didn't want you in the end only because you were not, like, my day one. But in terms of, like, people who I think I would have had a hard time against, like, I, I genuinely believed that part of it. I do think that you would have been a hell of a competitor to go against. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, okay, that was cool. You answered my question. Um, and I saved the worst for last. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, Anthony, I really hope that um, you know how I, proud I am of you because I think after Revival, we had a little bit of a... Just a, I don't know. It was just a weird time, and I'm glad that I was able to reconnect with you and actually have fun playing with you and not have to lie to you about who I voted for. Um, I just really hope that you're as proud of yourself as I am of you, um, and I feel like you're not getting enough credit for everything that you've done in this game. Um, but to kind of steer clear of that, um, a general consensus of the jury based on the roundtable was that Competition wins don't necessarily mean that you're a good player. Not you, I mean you as a very general statement. Um, so I kind of want to give you a chance to explain why you had a strong game that didn't connect to your competition wins. Like, basically, what made you a good player, even though, like, do you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm, like, explaining well enough. But, like, just not based on your competition wins, what made you a good player? Yeah, um, I think I had, I, I think I had a pretty strong strategic game. Um, you know, I didn't win a comp until week seven. Um, and so I, you know, the things that I did the first six weeks, um, you know, getting Timmy to make me his defender. Um, and even though he went the next round, as Jules kind of said earlier, it kept me safe for another round. It showed people that, you know, I was would be loyal and true to my word, even when people were saying, you should cut Timmy, like probably the best choice. Um, but showing people in that sense that I'm transparent, that I'm true to my word, you know, allowed for people to see me less of a threat uh, because, you know, I, I could win comps. Um, and if people could see that as dangerous on the road, you know, um, I wanted to minimize that threat. Um, so, you know, saving Timmy, that was a definitely a strategic move there. Um, and uh, even I wanted to talk about, I know I won um, my first totem pole win, but using that win as a strategic, like the way I made that totem pole was very, very specific. Keeping Asia safe that round was because I knew Lainey was going to be the switch. And if Lainey wanted to save William and keep William safe, she would switch William and Lane. I mean, she would switch William and Asia, the one person who I wasn't connected to in this game. But I was fine with keeping Asia in because I knew that at that point, threats had to go. So putting William at the bottom uh, was a very strange move because it you know, made Jules happy and made Wyatt happy. But also knowing that Lainey could switch William out with Asia was also a possibility. Um, so having both scenarios being covered, you know, effectively made me not a target for anyone in this game, even though I just won the totem pole competition. Um, and even making Asia safe, you know, if Asia had won the next totem pole competition, you know, maybe I wouldn't be as much of her target um, as it would have been if I had put Asia straight into the bottom five. Um, so making that strategic decision, I also feel like um, keeping my options open, especially when you know, it seemed like it was, you know, me, Dom and Lynn versus, you know, Wyatt and Adam, you know, um, keeping my options open, especially with Wyatt. Um, and, you know, Wyatt, we had talked and, you know, I think they were honestly genuinely serious about breaking their final three deal with Asian Jewels had they won. Um, and, you know, getting into the final four, and, you know, having to face a final three deal and knowing that one person would possibly break it and you know it was us two in the final two you know i felt confident that no matter who would won i would be sitting here 
But knowing that Wyatt was my greatest competition, you know, I held my hand up for seven hours. And I think, you know, if that doesn't make me a great player, I hope, you know, it's, you know, showing that I had, you know, been honest with Wyatt the entire game and having to break that, you know, really sucked. Um, and I feel really shitty about that part of the lying. Um, but um, the transparency that I had built up throughout the entire game allowed that decision to be made. Um, and so having that trust and strategic and being transparent and open as much as I could, when people asked me where I was voting, I'd be like, this is who I'm voting for. Um, especially on date night, I told people I'm, I'm a straight shooter. I'm sh voting for William. Um, you know, that's how that kind of ended up. And I think making those strategic moves and making those social moments very limited, but making them count, I think, despite even the competition ones, you know, I think I would have made it pretty far. Okay, I, that is everything that I have for you guys. Um, again, I'm very proud of all three of you because, I mean, I don't know, I think coming from a pre-made rumor from week two, which still was not even real, um, I think you guys played pretty phenomenal games and all three of you should be proud of yourselves no matter the outcome. Um, if I could vote for all three of you, I would. Um, but unfortunately, I cannot because of Monty. So Sorry. with that being said, yeah, see, <laughs> fuck you, Monty. But I think this season has a really good winner no matter what. And yeah, I cannot wait to see how it turns out. <laughs> All right, Dom, you can head on out whenever you're ready. Just there you go. All right, so... Next up, we have our second to last juror. We have Wyatt back again. All right, hello, Wyatt. So just like all of the other jurors, you will have 10 minutes to say any statements, ask any questions that you want. Um, so yeah, once you start your jury bit, then your time will start. Okay, so I have statements for, and then I have some questions. Anthony, I just want to correct you and also commend you on making the right move because I never considered cutting Asia or Jules. Um, so I'm happy my missed work. If I won that last totem pole, like you'd be in jury. Um, that being said, um, <clears throat> it's going to be hard to get my vote, mainly because my loyalty to Asia. But the rock, paper, scissors thing was fucked up. <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, I won the rock, paper, scissors. I should have won this competition. But at the end of the day, it's whatever. Um, so for Asian Jewels, I feel like we all played really good social games. And like, Jules was definitely more risky by playing the middle and, you know, kind of like voting both ways depending on what she needed. Um, and Asia, like, you had such a good social game. Like, you, it was so long until you were even nominated. Like, and you didn't make as many flashy moves, but, like, that's expected when you're playing a game where, like, you want, like, where you need everyone to keep you safe. Um, so I guess my question for Asia is, are there any, like, key, small, little, like, less flashy moves that you'd like to highlight? You maybe haven't highlighted. Oh, okay. Let me think. I feel like... Hmm. I feel like any, like, small thing that I tried to do was, like, small, like, subtle, subtle. Um, for instance, though this one didn't work out, as Megan said, she thought that you voted <laughs> with her instead of me. Um, but, you know, I was angling for the switch there. I was like, Megan, whatever I tell you at the end of tonight, that is the truth. And I told Megan I was voting Jules out, and that's exactly what I did. So, like, things like that, just <laughs> trying to grab power where I knew I couldn't get it in comp wins. Um, let's see what else. Uh, there was also, after Drew left, and this 
is just partially attributed to the fact that I didn't know what the fuck was going on. The second I got an inkling that Adam might be disloyal and that Adam might have um, had anything to do with Drew leaving, I went to Cindy and me and Cindy started talking shit ASAP. We were like, all right, let's let's talk about how we got to get rid of Adam. Like, let's talk about how Adam is a threat. Adam needs to go. Um, this, that, and that. And I started telling that to other people too, um, which is why it was very shocking to me when Adam saved me because um, from the time Drew left, I had kind of been anti-Adam because I thought that he had a lot to do with um, Drew leaving. Still don't know if that was really the case, but in the end, um, I got what I wanted, so I wasn't really upset by it. Um, Other than that, oh, there was a time where... Who was, oh yeah. So Megan was top of the totem pole. um, And this was the first time that I was in the bottom of the totem pole. I volunteered to go there. I, we had an alliance of myself, Megan, you, Jules. um, Not me forgetting. These alliances have been empty for so long at this point. The real ones. (laughs) The real ones. Okay, yeah, and Cindy, and Cindy was gone, but um, Megan won top of the totem pole, and I said, hey, um, Megan, you can put me in the bottom, because I felt very safe, Um, and then Adam got also put in the bottom, and then me and Adam (laughs) started talking about, oh my god, I can't believe Megan would do this, why would she ever do this, meanwhile, I knew that we were going to be in the bottom the whole time, but just sort of small things that I was doing at all times to make sure that my allies liked me more than each other um, so that they were never worried about taking me out and they turned the infighting towards each other. Uh, Same thing that happened with you and Jules. So Jules did a little bit of that herself. Um, It was just literally at all times that was my goal was just to be the most liked of all of my allies. If I was in a group, I needed everyone in that group to want to take me farther than the rest. Um, okay, my next question is for Jules. Um, uh, oh, so like. I guess my answer is kind of similar to Cindy's, but like, it just baffles me how you were able to like, keep everyone's trust and not like, I knew it was a possibility that you were like flipping on certain boats. And like, I was still like, oh no, like, couldn't be like, no. And like, blamed like Megan or someone else in my head. Like, I just want to know, like, how? Like, just explain it more. (laughs) (laughs) I I just, like, this is one question I wish I could have the answer to, because like I said, it's just like, I I felt like when I made my opening speech, I was like, oh, wow, that was so bad. Everyone's going to drag my ass tonight. And you're all like, Haha, ha, you're such a like you're you're <laughs> what did Megan say? You're a rat, a <laughs> goblin, like the nice or I said, huh? <laughs> it's just I don't I just feel like I guess to the best of my abilities, I really do try to be likable and still like just I just talk a lot and I try to talk so much that I don't become questionable or f- am, am seen as I don't know how to word this. <laughs> I <laughs> I get what you're saying though. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like kind of like I don't even mean to do it. I just try to be likable, but I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <what> I mean? <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um all right, and then Anthony I want to know, like, and sorry if you might have said the jury chat's been going, and I've been trying to pay attention to this as possible. Um, 
was like you kind of like letting off on your social game like really like was that like intentional or like i don't know i feel like midway through kind of became yeah, less social with most of the house like more social with me but maybe like other not so yeah, yeah. In a perfect world, like I would have been social the entire time, you know. And then, and just me being honest, just like school and like a lot of other things happening, um, it, it was hard to like DM people and reach out and like, you know, throughout the day, like I, you know, I'd work or like I just have things that like went throughout a lot of the hours where people would be awake, and you know, I'd be awake at like four a.m. and like I'm not gonna reach someone out someone at four a.m. because then I'm gonna go to sleep and then I'll sure. respond and then I'll respond at like three p.m. It was just, um. Yeah, and in that sense, it, it became harder. And the only time I really could talk to people was just like strategic, you know, like, oh, who are you voting for? Like things like that. Right. Um, and and even then, like it became harder to reach out to people. So it, it was not intentional. Um, but I but I do think when I did talk to people, like, you know, I, I tried to make it count as much as possible. Um, and I think a lot of the things that I said, everything was honest and transparent and I think had impact throughout the game. Um, especially like in date night when, you know, I was saying Kaylee's the person like you should throw your votes on, um, and things like that. Right. Cool. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Um, my vote's kind of up in the air. I mean... I have to say, like, I do have a preference for Asia or Jules, but let's see how this last uh, question goes. All right. Bye. All right. And last but not least, back from his TA duties, we have William. So let's bring him on in. Hello, William. Welcome. Um, to the questioning. Now I know the whole spiel. You know, okay, worry. perfect. I'm the last juror. We've been this enough. How long have we been going for? Like an hour and a half now? We're good. Um, hi, guys. How are we doing tonight? That's what we love to see. Um, I love you three so much. Um, I know I didn't. I haven't worked with all of you guys for a majority of the game. I was kind of like playing both sides a little bit, which is annoying. But um, truly, I love you guys. I'm so happy that each of you guys are here. Y'all are so kind-hearted and amazing and perfect. Um, every question I possibly had was taken already, and um, every time I kept trying to think of a new question, it was, it was gone immediately. So um, I'm just going to spend time just, like, praising you guys. Um, and maybe if it comes up a question, I'll ask it then. Um, but, yeah, so a little bit of praise, a little bit of sorries, but we're, we'll just go through it. Um, I'll, I'll say first off, um, I came into this night with my vote kind of locked, um, but, but, um, Jules, <laughs> um, you really, you really, you really, uh, I don't know what to say. I, my plan was to not vote for you, but you, you killing it tonight. You are killing it. Let me just say that. Um, I don't, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but Anthony, you guys as well. Um, I just um, get to stuff as she did. Is it going to be small that she didn't say that we're maybe smaller? Okay, gotcha, Wyatt. Um, um, so and and I I think that each of you guys kind of represent a like physical, social, strategic kind of aspect of this game perfectly. And I think Jules, obviously, I think you're very social. Um. I believe Wyatt said it best when they said that I was um, a slime because I was playing the middle. Um, but you played the middle flawlessly. I think I think you, everyone can agree that you were kind of talking to everyone, playing over here, playing over there, and were, was never caught ever. I was caught so long ago, and I, my game went downhill from there. We, we're not going to talk about day night. Um, who's next in who's next in line? We'll go, um, we'll go, we'll go Asia. Asia, my love, I love you so much. You're my favorite person of all time. Just know that. Um I I I think you killed the strategic game. I think um Wyatt brought up the idea of miss, and I really think that you missed it everyone 
this whole game. Um, just because, like, you were never a target. You were never a threat. You were talking to everyone. And, like, you had your, you had your, you had your little say. Um, I am a little confused by your game a little bit, so I might ask you later to talk about that a little bit more. Because, like, I was the one who was asking about um, some of your failed moves when Cindy brought it up. Um, we'll get to that later. Uh, Anthony, you killed the physical game. I think if we talk about physical, not just comp, obviously comp, comp wins. It's what got you here. But um, it's gone. Um, but also, if you, think, if you think about physical in terms of advantages, you're the, you're the only person here who has gotten an advantage. Um, or at least played an advantage. I don't know if you guys if you guys got one. Um, the switches, the defenders, everything I think could be encompassed encompassed um, in physical, and I think you killed that section of the game. Um, um, I guess apologies. I just want to say quickly to Asia and Jules. I'm sorry. Um, I was the one who kind of threw out the uh, the rumor of um, y'all being like close to the very beginning of the game. I didn't know about any kind of server that y'all were in i didn't know about it i just said it because i know y'all were you you two are like kind of close that's all i didn't i didn't think that was going to happen the way it did but it did and i'm sorry um okay i'll just ask questions because i'm i don't know i'm running out of time how, how long am i going is this been like five minutes okay um six minutes i have or I, okay um jules i have a question um, taken, uh, given by Wyatt. Um, Wyatt says, uh, Jules, can you tell me some strategic moves that you made that were maybe a bit smaller, that wasn't so flashy, that kind of was your little, little subtle moves? Kind of the same question that, um, Wyatt asked Asia, but to you. Can I think about this for a second? For sure, for sure. Um, Thank you, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll ask each guys a question, you guys can get time to think. Um, Asia, I'll go to you. Um, like I said earlier, I, um, I, I will say personally, from my own standpoint, um, I came into this night thinking I was not going to vote for you just because, um, obviously we weren't, we weren't connected much for majority of the game. And, um, I just had a hard time personally seeing what moves you made that were your own moves, obviously because we weren't working together. Um, and I think, Bits of what you said today confused me more than it helped me, because um, it made me believe that you said you weren't actually making too many big moves because you were trying to be subtle, which I understand. That's a great under the radar kind of game, but in a way, it made me feel like the moves that you did try to make kind of fell flat. Obviously, some things were out of your control. My advantages, my advantage. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need to stop. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, I don't know, I guess, tell me, tell me, um, I should that in advance. just tell me why I'm wrong. Um, you, you I can just, answer that now if you're good. For sure. Go ahead. Oh, I kind of tried to answer when, um, whenever Cindy brought it up that you said that, okay, so I do think the only big moves that I have like tried to make, like were the voting for you and then the split vote at final five the yeah. voting for you failed obviously the final five one did not the other ones i don't think were moves at all like you can call them moves but like it was literally just me being in the minority because people were saying oh it's between this person and this person mm -hmm. and then me voting for the wrong person and it was never like oh i'm gonna get this person out because they're a big threat and the da -da 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 -da. it was literally just because like oh, I'm closer to this person, or this person talks to me more, so I want them to stay. So I don't really count those as moves. If mm -hmm. they were moves, then I would have worked so much harder than I actually did on them. The only one that I, like, pushed for um, that didn't end up working out was, like, Drew. Because, like, Drew was, like, corralling votes. He was very afraid of leaving. Um, so, you know, I talked to Cindy. I talked to um, Megan. I talked to Adam. Um... I talked to Jules, like, I ran around for that one. But even still, it wasn't, like, a move. It was, like, 
oh, he's my final two. I'm going to try to keep him safe. So I don't think that, I think that the move against you failed. We can all agree with that. Yeah, but and that, rest, that was control. Yeah, but like the rest, I don't see as like failed moves. It's literally just like me having voted in the minority because the vote maybe wasn't in my best interest. Um, so yeah, I don't think that a lot of my moves failed. I'm at a 50% rate for actual moves, I think. Um, but it is true that I did vote in the minority for a big chunk of this game. But like I said, I just didn't care too much because I didn't think that it affected me in the long run. Yeah, you're still here, which is commendable. Um, Jules, you ready to go? Yeah, okay. So I touched on this earlier, but I would like to go more in-depth with it and I feel like it can go either way, but the way I approached the situation was more, like, subtle. But it was whenever it was Adam leaving, and I voted to keep you. And um, I had to talk to Lainey because she was up in the air. She wanted to throw her vote, and I did not want that. I did not want that because I knew I did not have the best relationship with Adam. And I also knew Adam was a really big threat, especially with him knowing about the Advantage server. So I was like, okay... And then, like, you telling me he was in a final three with you and Wyatt. So I was like, okay, um, <laughs> I got to Something needs to be done. Mm-hmm. So I went to Lady and I put up this front. I was like, look, we are at the bottom. We have to do something. And I was just, like, subtly, like, because she was like, yeah, I'm really up in the air. And even though, like, we were supposed to be talking about pros and cons of both of you, I was definitely planting seeds that there were more pros to getting Adam out than there were to getting you out. Mm-hmm. Um, so just situations like that. And because of that, and because of gaining that trust with her, even though she, um, whenever she got the defender, um, power to nominate two people, even if I was next to, um, Megan and it was like, it almost could have gone either way, but because Lainey blew up her final, like put up her final two and targeted her and told everybody to else to get Megan out, I was able to sit pretty and not do much for that situation. So just stuff like that is mostly, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. All right, you got it. You got it. That was a perfect answer. Um, lastly, I'll go, to, I'll go to Anthony. I have two kind of micro questions for you just to kind of, and you can use the rest of the time as you need. Um, so like I said earlier, I, I, came, I came into this with my vote kind of locked and it was for you. Um, because I just obviously like, standing kind of against Asia. It's just I was working with you, so I was it was easier for me to see your moves. Um, and as everyone's been saying, the jury's been very very active. Uh, I'll say the le- I'll say that to the least. Um, so I want to give you I want to give you this time to kind of say two statements that I've been seeing a lot that's been used as a negative to your game. Um, the first of that being that towards the beginning of the game you were greatly benefited by getting powers because you were on the bottom and people wanted to help you. Um, so if you want to see why that's wrong, and I'll say the other one now if you want to answer that, or I can answer, I can ask it again later. Another one was that a lot of people saw your game as very second in command to Dom. Um, can you just prove why both of those are wrong to believe? Yeah. Um, so for the first one, um, I mean, I in the beginning of the game, um, the two powers that I got was Defender um, from Timmy, who, um, you know, I don't think picked me because he thought I was, I needed help. Um, I think he picked me because he genuinely, like, felt like I was going to save him, which I did because I kept my promise on there. Um, and the other, I mean, was another Defender. Um, and so I think both those times, you know, uh, they knew I was going to get saved and i think the powers that i did find um i didn't even need to use um so saying that like i needed like those powers to i guess try to get to where i am i hope is a little about because i still have my power grab that i never got to use um and if i did you know i would have broken up that final three you know i w- asia like probably wouldn't have sat here or jules wouldn't have sat here um because that's like i would have broken up that final three um and i think being in second command to dom um I mean, my strategy was to hide behind the bigger threats because when, as I said before, when we got to the later part of the game, you know, the switch can pick anyone they want to be eliminated. Um, and, you know, if I was aligned with, you know, you and Dom and Lane and Laney and those people, 
you know, who are bigger threats than I am, you know, they're going to get switched to the bottom instead of me. Uh, and I think that behind the scenes, though, I still was making connections with people, you know, I think um, early on, you know, working with Cindy and like, even though I, I was viewed as a little bit ex expendable because I was put in the bottom, um, I was switched out. You know, I still, um, you know, built that connection with Wyatt and, you know, kept that line of communication open. Um, and, you know, being able to be that like one swing vote, you know, like even um, in a lot of those, like my vote was necessary for Dom to stay, you know, during um, every time he was up for elimination, um, I kept him here because he was my meat shield, um, not the other way around. Um, so I hope that is shown and that despite um, my comp wins, I hope that's viewed as a positive. Um, my second comp win, I don't think I even needed to win uh, because, again, you know, um, my connection won. I don't think Jules would have switched me into the bottom um, over Dom or Lainey. You know, I, I think in the sense that um, I made my own moves and built my own path and make, I built from the final eight on, I built the final three basically because I won every single totem pole competition. And Dom didn't do that. No one else did that. I basically built the entire end game. Um, and I hope that is shown and that is uh, apparent um, with those comp wins because even though like it's not like I just won immunity, um, it's that I built these hone poles strategically so that I could get people through as many rounds as possible and to um, show. And even in my confessional, like I love Dom to death, but I was like, you know, if Dom goes here, you know, it's not the end of the world because you know I know I can't beat him. Um, and like this is how I'm building the final three and how to get there. Perfect answers. Yeah, you guys all answered questions perfectly. Uh, I'll just wrap up by saying my vote, basically a randomizer, because you guys all did great tonight. Um, like I said, I came in with a preset idea, but now I have no clue. Um, I'm just going to have to think about it for 24 hours. I'm just not going to sleep tonight. I'm just going to think about who I should vote for. But um, y'all did amazing. I cannot wait to have aid any of you guys as the winner of the season. The season has been so much fun. It's been the most fun I've ever had playing a game, even though it's been very messy and this jury chat has been very not fun to be in with certain people. But love you guys all. I love everyone in this cast. I love you guys all. Thank you. Have a great night, esteemed panel judges. All right. So with that, we are done with the question and answer portion of this game. That was a lot of questions and you guys gave a lot of answers so congrats um we are now into the uh final plea slash closing statement section so randomized in the chat jules you're up first again um these closing statements should be about five minutes um so when you're ready you can give your closing statement and then we will move on to asia and end with anthony um y'all are sick for this but I guess I'll get into it. <laughs> um, it's been a very fun night, honestly. Um, I didn't expect any of this <laughs> um, or getting like, <laughs> it was very, I think I had a very fun time is um, I've only been in like one finale before this and I was like shaking the whole time the last one, but at this time I, I was just vibing. It was a very fun time. So I, I really appreciate everyone being so nice, <laughs> even when calling me. <laughs> <laughs> a snake it was really funny i did get a good chuckle a lot <laughs> so thank you thank you for putting up with my non-stop laughing i, I get very nervous <laughs> but um um i guess just to close everything off tonight um i think i've expanded on a lot and i think it really opened my eyes to like what i actually did in this game because i don't think i hold myself accountable enough i think i told asia i was like oh queen i'm just your goat <laughs> and i was and then i guess tonight it just kind of made me i think i grew more confidence as more as the night went on so thank you <laughs> and i appreciate that but um <clears throat> i think i deserve to win because as <laughs> as it's been said many times before i was able to successfully ride the middle socially strategically while being a snake or a rat troll your choice <laughs> and i think that should be appreciated just because i was never made a target and no one ever made me their target and because of that i was kind of guaranteed a spot in the final three um from final five to begin with i don't think no matter how it would have gone i feel like i was still would have been here because 
even with Anthony's power, they would have targeted Asia over me anyways, or Wyatt, because I was on their good side. And because I was on Asia and Wyatt's good side, they were going to keep me here anyways. So because of that, <laughs> I think I did deserve to be here. And I'm really happy to be here. And just like, again, by planting seeds, keeping people on my good side, I... I did the damn thing. My pussy talented. <laughs> and I, yeah, I mean, I mean, even if I wasn't the flashiest, I mean, like the flashiest thing I did um, during date night, I was the last person to talk to William. And he told me straight up, he was like, I think you should vote someone else or I'm going to drag you. I said, okay. And I <laughs> voted him anyways. So <laughs> Asia and I both, <laughs> we both um, decided to be bold that night. And, Unfortunately, <laughs> it did not get to happen, but I was willing to go out for my allies because even if like, I know like the whole point of these games is like, oh, you want to win, you want to play the best game. But the most fun I had during this was just like with my friends and like doing stuff if, like, and I was really willing to go out in some like points if it meant like Asia or Wyatt got to move on or Megan or like, well, I was going to say Sydney, but she was gone by the time like it came down to, um, Megan, Wyatt, Asia, and I. But yeah, so it's just like, even if like I was snaky at some points, I de definitely was loyal to. But sometimes you do have to make decisions. That's the unfortunate part about games, and you have to cut people. And I'm sorry if I burned any bridges while doing so, but at the same time, with everyone, I guess I don't want to, I feel like I sound cocky. I hate doing this. That's why I don't like doing it. But with everyone praising me tonight, I feel like it does show that even if I did piss people off and send them to jury and cut them off, I still, no one's mad at me, like genuinely mad at me. I didn't get any bitter questions or anything like that. <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense, but I just think that it would be nice to win. However, I do love Anthony and Asia a whole lot. And I think that they've both really, really, really proved that they are also uh, wonderful players. So literally, whoever wins, I don't care. I'm just happy to be sitting with them. And the only thing I'm bitter about is that y'all flirted with Anthony the whole night when Asia's right there. <laughs> She's looking stunning. Just kidding, you both are. But thank you so much. Um, have a wonderful night. And I'm really happy that I got the opportunity to do this because it was so much fun. <laughs> All right, Asia, you are up. All right, first of all, I just want to say, like, thank you to Monty, Peppa, Jared, um, Jacob Jinx, everybody who played this game, the other finalists. Like, I I was not always in a great place, like, mentally in this game. I've kind of been on a roller coaster, but, like, you guys did make this game enjoyable. I've had fun. I've had a lot of laughs. This Q&A has been I think the epitome of this game was we were having fun. We were having a good time. And I don't often get to say that in games, so I really am grateful. Now, into the fucking shit, I guess. Um, I feel like this game is such a precarious place to be in. Any wrong move can get you eliminated at any time. If you are not winning comps, you are not safe. That being said, I did play the safe route but I always knew what I was doing. When I didn't have um, people on my side who wanted to vote with me, that's fine because I knew about it because I had people telling me who was voting with me and who wasn't. When I voted in the minority, I thought that's fine. I can regroup from this. When I lost allies, I said, that's fine because I still have this person and this person and this person. There are people who are confused about my game and that's because I played it really close to the vest. Anthony, William, Lainey, they may not know as much about my game, and that's because I wasn't very close with them. And I didn't want people who I wasn't close with able to say, oh, look at her doing this, this, and this. She's a threat. I don't want to take her to the end. I thought that there was a very real chance I wouldn't be here tonight. I really thought that I could get fourth. And the reason I didn't is because Wyatt was seen as a bigger threat than I am, because Wyatt was sort of obvious about how good of a game that they were playing. Whereas mine was sort of under the radar, but people did see it and people did acknowledge it because I let them see that side of me. Um, I don't think that I would have been here if I was flashier earlier on. 
Um, that's why Cindy got dragged. That's why Adam got voted out over William. That's why Wyatt got cut last night. I think that I did everything that I possibly could to not only get to the end, but to get the people that I wanted to be in the end, in the end with me, um, such as making sure Jules didn't give Wyatt the boot over Dom, things like that. I, I worked so hard in this game and I know it's not super, super impressive. I don't have comp wins and I don't have like, you know, people say, oh, she had a lot of failed moves. I didn't. It may sound cutthroat, but when I knew that people were going, I was fine with it. Yeah, it was sad, but I knew that it was no skin off my back. It wasn't going to put me in danger the next round. Voting in the minority has not ever put me in danger. Flipping a vote never, ever put me in danger in this game. I was in danger when I volunteered to go into the bottom, and then after that when basically everyone was in danger. I just feel like I really did play this game the absolute best I could with what I had. Um, and I just hope that any confusion you had was cleared up. And I would just really appreciate your votes. Again, Jules, Anthony, you're perfect. You're wonderful. I think this final three is just so good. Like, I am genuinely so happy with the ending of this game. And again, I don't get to say that often. So I'm just really happy to have been part of this experience. Also, Jules, you look cute too. I love you. <laughs> All right, and closing us out, Anthony, whenever you're ready, you can go. Yep. Okay, everyone, I think that um, hopefully I deserve your vote tonight um, because I really do think I hit on every, my game hit every aspect um, that encompasses the totem pole, um, you know, winning competitions and basically controlling, you know, the narrative from Final Eight on, you know, everyone worked within my narrative that I built, you know, the totem poles that I created, people had to decide how to vote from there. Um, and and basically having that all the way until the Final Four competition, you know, um, I, I don't know why I said it, but we played Rock, Paper, Scissors and I lost and I still didn't put my hand down because I knew, you know, that one, why it was my biggest competition in my mind, but also that this Final Three deal that I had heard about already, that I knew about already, you know, it's one versus three and I knew I had to win. So I held my hand up for seven hours because um, of like the information that I knew. So those wins were purposeful, you know, winning uh, and building those narratives and people having to work within them was purposeful. And even from the beginning, you know, Henry, one of my closest allies, I got Henry to put Lockie basically in the bottom five. And, you know, and then I saved Timmy and then it was a heavy vote. And with that heavy vote, I knew Lockie was going home, even if they didn't quit. Um, and Lockie was someone who wanted me out from day one. Um, Drew going out uh, was influenced by me, you know, um, being on call with Kaylee, Lynn, Dom, you know, it's, it's, we all like, I'm pretty sure one of us said, I think I said, it. I'm not going to take claim if like I didn't, but like getting Drew out when I knew Drew was after me um, and making them pre-jury and um, having influence even from the beginning without those comp wins and voting on the right side every time because I knew what was going on in the game. I knew where votes were going, uh, finding an advantage, being the defender, being in the bottom five. You know, I, I feel like I've hit every point that encompasses the total plan. I really hope um, that when voting tonight, you know, vote for who you think played the best game, but played it best within the sense of the totem pole. Um, because I do think that within that aspect, you know, um, I built connections as much as I could. You know, I hope outside influences don't affect um, how you view my game. Um, but, but from the beginning, you know, I played as hard as I could. Um, I controlled the narrative from final eight all the way on. Everyone else had to go within there. Um, and, and I do think that, you know, pushing names, you know, even William on live night, pushing Adam's name instead of William, you know, because I knew William would be a bigger threat. I knew Jules wanted William gone. I knew why I wanted William gone. And, you know, winning the next totem pole and putting William at the bottom, you know, made Jules and William White probably trust me a little bit more than they would have if I had put someone else at the bottom. Um, and so going for Adam instead um, allowed for that to happen. And just making these purposeful votes and purposeful movements, um, helped me uh and my game um and i really hope that that is apparent um and that from the beginning even with the re-rank you know um having close allies 
Um, and that, you know, from the beginning, like I worked from the bottom, you know, it was clear that me, Lynn and Dom, you know, weren't super connected with everyone, but I knew that those two would be eliminated before me. And somehow, you know, we all got to jury. Um, and, you know, and I, and I think that's because of my transparency and that people could see that I could be used as a vote and, you know, maybe as a connection or Dom could be used as a connection or just, um, me using them as meat shields kind of helps me get further in this game. Um, and I think if I hadn't minimized my threat level in the beginning and hid my comp ability, I, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, and though, you know, it looks like I comped out, those comp wins were purposeful and they helped control the narrative. And I think from final eight on, I basically decided the final three. Um, and I hope that is apparent uh, from tonight. Um, all right. Love you, everyone. If this was a really fun game. No matter what happens, I'm sitting with the two most amazing people in the world. Um, and um, as I finish this, Adam, 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 Adam. Okay. Good night, everyone. All right. Thank you, finalists. Thank you, jury. Thank you, everyone who tuned in for even a little bit of this Q&A. This has been a really fun game, and this has been a good night to end it out on. So... Congratulations again to the final three. Um, congratulations to the jury. Um, you now have the responsibility of choosing one of these three players to be the face of Chameleon of Worlds, the totem pole. So you have a little less than 24 hours. Your votes will be due at 9 p.m. Eastern, where we will have the live winner reveal and live awards um, at 9 p.m.-ish. A little after, probably. But... That's okay. Um, so yeah, thank you again, everyone. Um, and good night. I won't keep you up any longer. Oh, that's Anthony's timer done. All right. Anyways, I am stopping.